Amen. Chapter 1, 1 Peter. Chapter 1. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance. Somebody say inheritance. Incorruptible, incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away. Yes. Reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Father, thank you for the spirit that we feel in this church today. Even the announcements, even everything it seems that we're doing today is anointed and blessed of God. And we're just, Lord, being uplifted and elated and challenged. Lord. And I just pray that you continue to show yourself strong. I pray the word will go and follow up on good ground. And we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know what? Before you be seated, shake somebody's hand and say, I can't wait for the communion today. Amen. 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 The Apostle Peter wrote his first epistle. We talked about that in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 13. The place, of course, when you read that particular verse, the place of writing is said to have been Babylon. Babylon, however, was a symbolic name for Rome, believe it or not, frequently used by early Christian writers to avoid trouble with the Roman authorities. Because Rome perpetuated the false religious system begun in Babylon by Nimrod. The epistle was addressed to believers in five provinces. In Asia Minor, it was Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. These providences were located north and west of Israel, what is today known as Turkey. Now, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, there is no evidence that Peter ever visited the area personally. But his apostolic authority would have been known and respected. Peter was perhaps building on the ministry of the Apostle Paul, who spent considerable time in Asia Minor doing his missionary journey. Now, the scattered believers, the scattered believers, of Peter's days were experiencing great difficulties. But trials purify and it proves our faith. Can you say amen? amen. Trials purify and proves faith. We are confronted today. We are confronted with the same difficulty if we are living godly for Christ Jesus. They had the benefit of prophesied truth. The Old Testament prophet foretold the grace of God and suffering before glory. We not only have the advantage of the Old Testament prophecies, but now also we have completed the New Testament. You see, they, they needed a proper perspective. It could only come from a disciplined mind and biblical balance and a hope that they would not quit in the midst of their adversity. We have precisely the same need today. Perhaps even 
more so in the age characterized by our giant techno te technological uh -huh. ad achievement on the one hand and a radical decline of moral and spiritual discernment on the other hand. But we, the church, we, the church today, we need to keep our eyes fixed upon our living hope. Yes. Yes. It's been stated in this church today that Jesus is coming again. Yes. Yes. Knowing that the trials and testing of life, it refines us more each day. So that we might be found unto praise, somebody say praise, praise. and honor, honor and glory, glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Amen. First Peter chapter 1, verse 7. Yes. Yes. Peter, in his letter or epistle, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, amen, he uh, informed the saints of his days that they were the elect of God. Uh -huh. They were the elect of God. Amen? Amen. In God's sovereignty had chosen them to be his children in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Mm -hmm. The circumstances through which they were passing would not have suggested that they were chosen of God. After all, the Bible said they were strangers or exiles in a foreign land. Amen. This is in 1 Peter 1 and 1. And they were undergoing, listen to this church, the elect of God, God's people were undergoing persecution because of their faith. Yes. Amen. And we can read that later on in 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7, 1 Peter 2, 12, 3, 13 through 17, 1 Peter 4, 16 and 17. Amen. Their circumstances notwithstanding, Peter reminded them that they were the elect of God. Amen. And God who chose them as his own knew what they were experiencing. Amen. Oh, that's, that's, that's deep. He knew what they were going through. Yes. He used three prepositions. The first one was to, and the second one was through, and unto. Uh -huh. In other words, to speak of their election, he said that their election was, first of all, according to, there's a two, according to foreknowledge. Uh -huh. And then the through, through sanctification, and unto obedience. What do you mean? In other words, amen, according to the foreknowledge of the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, and unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son. Amen? amen. amen. In other words, they were chosen, talking about the people of God in Peter's day. Yes. They were scattered because of persecution. They were chosen by the Father. Purchased by the Son, that's yes. redemption. Yes. And possessed, set apart by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Sanctification. You see, the triune God had done great and glorious things on their behalf. Oh, yeah. Still, if they were going to live victoriously, there were some important principles they had to understand. Yes. Am I talking to somebody today? Yes. Am I talking to the church today? Yes. There were some important principles that they had to understand. You notice I read the scripture out of the first word, amen, and, and, and verse 3 says, Blessed. 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 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. That word, blessed, blessed, in 1 Peter 1, 3, literally means to be well spoken of. Uh -huh. The particular Greek word for blessed is used only of God in the New Testament. Uh, it is appropriate for the tongues of men, as we've done today, and women, amen, to praise and to honor God. In other words, when we praise and honor God, we speak well of the triune God is. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. amen. God is good. Amen. amen. 
Amen. We speak well of him. But there's more to ascribing blessings to God than simply speaking well of him. Amen. As cursing carries with it the concept of death and badness, blessings carry with it the idea of life and goodness. Do you hear me? Deuteronomy 28, especially at Deuteronomy 30, 19. You see, after God created Adam and Eve, He blessed them and He said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. The idea was that in blessing Adam and Eve, God imparted to them life and goodness. So when we say, Amen, we bless you. May God bless you. We're talking about giving you life and goodness. Oh, you did you hear me? Amen. Giving you life and goodness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, when he told Adam and Eve they were to free, uh, procreate after their kind, God wanted many Adams and Eve on the face of the earth. Again, after the flood, the flood of Noah. After the flood of Noah, God blessed Noah and said what? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth in Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. In other words, God just destroyed the world by flood. However, in blessing Noah, he was in essence saying, I don't want you and your wife and your three sons and your three daughter-in-law roaming the earth. In blessing them, God was saying, I'm important to you, life and goodness. Yes, yes. Amen? Yes. Life and goodness. Yes. You see, whenever God's blessing, He's imparting life and goodness to the recipient. Yes. You can't be in the presence of God and be blessed of God and leave downtrodden. That's right. He's imparting life to you. He's breathing upon you the Holy Spirit. And where the Spirit is, there is liberty and life. Amen. There is liberty and life. The Lord and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is a living and good God. Amen. It is this God who will be well spoken of who is alive and good, and who precisely because He is a living God has begotten us again in rebirth and to a living, lively hope in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And I hear it, Sister Carlesa, all the time say, God's a good God. Yes, He's been good to me. Yes, He's a good God. Can you attest to that? Yes, has He been good to you? Yes, has He imparted life to you? Yes, Amen. Hallelujah. Titus chapter 2 verse 13, the living hope, amen. Peter speak of the second coming of the Lord, amen. Crucially bound up, amen, in uh, the second coming is that at his coming, the dead in Christ of all the ages will be resurrected and the one generation still living will be raptured, both to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the cloud. Well, where did you get that, Brother Kilby? Well, that's in Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, what we just read for the Lord yeah. Himself That's right. shall descend from heaven with a shout of the bark of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise. Amen. Hallelujah. Be resurrected first. Yeah. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we, those resurrected and those raptured, shall ever be with the Lord. Amen. Paul communicated the same truth to the Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52, Paul said, I behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or die, but we shall be changed. In other words, we shall be glorified. In a moment, the twinkling of an eye is a last trump. The trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised or resurrected incorruptible. And we, the living, shall be changed. In other words, we will be raptured and glorified. Hallelujah. 
You see, there's a widespread belief that the blessed hope, talking about the blessed hope, is related solely to the rapture of the church. In other words, that those living when Christ returns will be raptured without dying. Amen, amen. That being alive of the coming of Christ occurred, amen, caused, caused for participation in the blessed hope. That's the only way that we can uh, take part in the blessed hope of those who are alive. I mean, that's a popular, amen, uh, you know, that's a popular view. But the blessed hope embodies the fact, listen to me, that no matter how dark the night, how long the journey, how large, amen, or many of the obstacles, Peter was getting across the dam, he says, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, not even death itself can separate the believer from the ultimate glorification and the eternal presence of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Absolutely nothing. Amen. You see, the Lord coming, the dead in Christ will be resurrected. Mortal shall put on immortality. Corruptible will put on incorruption. The glorified body will be reunited with the soul, which in consciousness have been in the presence of God since physical death. What are you saying here? We have been in the presence of God. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Believers still living will be raptured and instantaneously chained, glorified. Both the resurrection and the rapture will forever be with the Lord. That's our blessed hope. Think about it. Think about it. Amen. You see, the early Christians and those now, those now, amen, rather than deny, denouncing their relationship with Christ, they're being devoured by the lion. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something. Amen. They do not lose their blessed hope. Amen. The great reformers, amen, who rather than denounce Christ, they were burned at the stake. But they did not lose their blessed hope. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. Praise God. The faithful missionaries, amen, who were martyred in foreign land because of their fidelity to Christ. They did not lose their blessed hope. Those courageous, those courageous believers who died under the communist regime because they refused to deny their faith they did not lose their blessed hope. Amen. You hear what I'm talking about here? Amen. Yeah. Amen. The very worst that Satan, the Antichrist, and the world can do is kill the body. Amen. Jesus has come for death and the grave through his resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's coming back to resurrect the dead and the rapture the living. The blessed hope is called a hope, not because uh, is uh, not because there is any speculation associated with it, as if it is uncertain or uncertain event, but because of its realization. Amen. It's still in the future. It awaits the second coming of Christ only in the sense. That it is our blessed hope. Yes, Hallelujah. You can bank on it. You can yes, take it. Yes, amen. Yes, to the bank. Yes, amen. Yes. Yes, but you sir. see what Peter is saying. We have a hope. Yes, sir. What more awaits you and I as a believer at Christ coming? Amen. It's more than just the resurrection and rapture. The blessed hope includes the fact that the child of God is also an heir to an inheritance. Thank you, Lord. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. First Peter chapter 4, 1 verse 4. In the first century, a person's inheritance was the portion received by virtue of birth into a particular family. Talking about inheritance. Since God, as a consequence of the believer's faith in Christ, has begotten us again, in other words, through the new birth. In 1 Peter 1, 3. 
Amen. First Peter 1 3, what does he say? He says that, Amen, the Son of God is therefore, Amen, his heir. We're his heir. Believers will not be impoverished, beggars, or vagabonds in the life to come. To the contrary, we will be rich beyond imagination. You hear what I'm saying? I am talking about our inheritance. Peter carefully chooses three words to define the believer's inheritance. Three words. All right? The word translated from the Greek are incorruptible, undefiled, and unfading. This is the King James. Again, incorruptible. Say incorruptible. Undefiled, undefiled and unfading. unfading. Amen. In other words, amen, that faith is not away. Each of these three Greek words, now listen, each of these three Greek words has a prefix A in front of it for the purpose of negation. Now right, listen to this. The word corrupt with a negative prefix A becomes incorruptible. All right? The word defile with a negative prefix A becomes undefiled. Mm -hmm. And the word fading with a negative prefix A becomes unfading. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is this. Amen. Corruptible becomes incorruptible. Amen. Defile becomes undefiled. undefiled. Fading become unfading. Now listen, what does this mean, brothers and sisters? Peter's intent is to contrast the believer's heavenly inheritance with the wealth of the world. The heavenly inheritance is incorruptible. Now in contrast, as a result of the fall of Adam and Eve, everything on earth is corruptible. You see the contrast here? All right, it's corruptible. The heavenly inheritance is undefiled in contrast as a consequence of human, humanity's outgoing sin, everything on earth is defiled. Amen. You follow me? Yes. Stain. Yes. The heavenly inheritance is unfading Amen. in contrast everything on earth according to the law of thermodynamics is faith. The earth, with all of its wealth, like a giant clock, is winding down. Peter point is this. He said, listen, the Lord Jesus Christ, not only Peter, but he said the same thing when he said, lay not up for yourself treasures on the earth. Where moth and rust does corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal. But lay up yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal in Matthew chapter 6, 19 and 20. Amen. Amen. Let me say this. Earthly riches are temporal. Heavenly riches are eternal. Amen. You see, the heavenly inheritance, talk about the inheritance. Mm -hmm. The heavenly inheritance which awaits every believer is said to be, and I'm coming down to close here. This is going to bless your heart. It is said to be reserved. In 1 Peter 1 4, it is reserved. Now, the idea here that our inheritance is reserved, the idea is that it has been set aside. And has been protected by God. I don't know about you, but I don't think it can be under any more strict security than God. Amen? It is protected by God. In other words, the direct object of the inheritance which is reserved, according to Peter, is you. God is protecting your inheritance because of you, the believer. You don't hear me, do you? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's because of you. It is reserved for you. And you are and, and you are kept. Not only the inheritance, but you are kept by, by your education. No. 
by your classification? No. Amen. By your nationality? No. How much money you have? No. You are kept by the power of God. First Peter 1 5. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna let me tell you something else about that word kept. That word kept is a military term. It carries the idea of, you know, when we were in the military, we had to pull guard duty. Uh -huh. They'd place us out sometimes in the same field. You didn't know what you were guarding, but you were on guard duty. And some of you have been in the military, can you? I see some heads up and down. Amen. See, that kept means garrison, in garrison. When we were... Amen. When we're in a danger area, in the danger area in combat, when you're facing the enemy, when you're facing the enemy, they have what they call a place called in garrison or a place where you can rendezvous. In other words, it was highly secure. They had secure all around, just like a, a, a circle of protection around one. And you could go in and you could get a hot meal. You could take, Brother Mark, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. You could take a shower. You could relax and sort of let your guard down because you know you, you knew you were well protected. Yeah. Yeah. You don't hear what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not only at the sound of the trump, the voice of the archangel, we're going to put on that glorified body. Yeah. But also, we're going to receive an inheritance yes. from the Lord. Yes. An inheritance. Yes. It is kept. It is yes. kept in reserve for you. Yes. Amen. Yes. In other words, amen. Nobody's going to break in and steal yes. your inheritance. Yes. Peter was encouraging the church. Yes. They were scattered. Because of the persecution. They were scattered all over Asia Minor. They were, they were being persecuted. They were being burned into state. They were being eaten by lions. But Peter said, Amen, you have a lively hope, a present hope waiting for you. Amen, waiting for you. Hallelujah. And he said, It's undefiled. Amen. It's incorruptible. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And it is unfading. Waiting for you. All right. Let me just say this point. And then we're going to sit at the Lord's table and go home. All right. Peter, he used the same word in encouraging the Philippian church. He wrote this in Philippians 4, 7. You can put it on the board. I don't know if you've got that underlined in your Bible or not. But I'd underline it. Peter, or Paul, Paul wrote, encouraging the Philippians. He said, listen, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep. Now, I'm, are we going to talk about that word kept or keep? Yes. Amen. We'll talk about that keep again. Yes. Amen. Keep, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Passes all shall, shall keep. Mm -hmm. That word keep means guard. Guard. Garrison. Hallelujah. Your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of peace. God of peace. Which passes all understanding. All In other words, that word, the sense kept is a Greek. And a, it, it is a present uh, a, a participant of grammatically speaking. This garden of the believer by God is said to be on a continuing, ongoing reality. In other words, it is never ceases. God never ceases to ceases. keep us. Amen. We may thank, thank, you. thank you. We may thank, amen, that God has abandoned when we're going through. Amen. We may, amen, feel like does God care and does He know what we're facing? You see, this, these are this, these are human terms and emotions when we're going through. We may think, amen, that God, amen, doesn't 
understand. What it is is we don't understand. He said, he said, we don't understand. Because he said it in the Word. It passes our understanding how God will keep us. He will keep us. Don't go in the towel. Amen. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't say that God doesn't care. Because if we can cast all of our cares upon Him, He cares for us. Amen. Amen. If God is a continuous, ongoing keeper, He never sleeps or slumber. He always keeps us. Now, here then is the absolute security of the believer. It is anchored in the promise and the infinite power of God Himself. Oh, that's powerful. Amen. No wonder the lyrics depend the words, more secure, no one ever, than the loved one of the Savior. According to Peter, according to Peter, the inheritance is kept and the heirs are guarded. At the Lord's coming, they can come in the inheritance which has been kept, mm -hmm. and the heirs who has been guarded mm -hmm. will be forever united. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And of course, incomparably best of all, the believer will see Jesus face to face. Yes. Yes. However wonderful it yes. is for the believer to, yes. amen, yes. contemplate and think about our inheritance, yes. we must live in the here and now. Yes. Peter yes. speaks yes. of this. Amen. Coming up. He's saying, and I'm going to talk about this later. He said, Worry and you're greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold yes, temptation. Yes, yes. Peter said, Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I know you're going through. Yes. And not only would one trial seem like when it rains it pours. Yes. Amen. When it rains it pours, it seems like there are many various manifold temptations and trials. He said that, but the trial of your faith would have been much more yeah. precious than gold. Right. Amen. That perish. Mm -hmm. Though it may be tried with fire, yeah. might be found unto I him praise and honor and glory at the appearing of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ, whom have not seen your love, and whom though ye see him not now, yet believe in you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. What Peter is saying, listen, what you're going through now, church, doesn't even compare. Doesn't even compare. The glory is coming of the Lord. Amen. You can kill the body, but not the soul. Hallelujah. Oh, if we could just get a grip of that, Brother McLeod. Hallelujah to know, amen, hallelujah, amen, that we have an inheritance, amen, hallelujah, we know that we've been kept, and we've been guarded by God, hallelujah, that's right, we sit at the Lord's table, amen, recognizing and 